So hello everyone. Um, well, uh, this is Brian and me. We are here to help you with any questions you might have about uh, Bravo channel, the integration with with both. So uh, for now, there is uh, Thomas and uh, Taylor. Uh, welcome. So if uh, I mean, if that sounds good for you, we can just start with one of you and and uh, maybe ask one question you have and then if, if we have more time and everyone has had time to ask something uh we can just expand if, if we need because we have like 45 minutes so yeah. if that sounds good then we can go ahead so thailand do you want to start yes please thank you again uh this is a really great opportunity to learn about both Zeno and bravo i really appreciate it um, so new to Xeno and Bravo, and I'm already in love with the both products. I've been spending a lot of time Googling and learning. <laughs> uh, my question is about um, a GET API, authenticated users. I'm able to do all that successfully now. Um, but when I, uh, I, I've been lear learning about the add-ons and how to create uh, a, a variable on the fly. So for example, I did follow some tutorials and I'm able to connect to the database. I have a transactional table, which users have likes. Uh, so users and items, and then there's a transactional table called likes. And I'm able to, I was able to create a, an add-on to successfully mark whether true or false, uh, whether that user, authenticated user, likes something or not in that get API. But now uh, I need to create another variable called state, a string variable uh, and uh, on the fly. And that string variable, uh, Javier, please correct me if I'm wrong, needs to be assigned either active or default value based on yeah. whether the Boolean is set to true or false. <laughs> so the general question is add-ons and functions and how to create um, um, variables on the fly, even though they don't exist in the database table, basically. Okay. So, well, I, I guess Brian can help you more like in the in the channel part. So yes, in the in the Bravo part, so also you, Brian, have the context. We have a feature, which is the conditional, sorry, the stateful component that needs to receive a text, which as Thailand said, is either default or active. And that basically uh, will make the component toggle between the two states. It could be like a like button or something like that. So I guess, uh, Thailand, you were trying to set this up in your Sano endpoint, right? And you have these questions to, well, you you, you want to, to get this done in the in the endpoint, right? Yes, please. Yes. And yep. again, uh, if it helps to screen share, I'm happy to. Uh, or if Brian is good with uh, the general understanding, if you want to mm -hmm. do a general tutorial, that would be good enough to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be great to screen share. I'll oh. give you uh, uh, my first question, which is the state, is that determined by whether or not they've liked it or not? Meaning that if like is true, is it now active? And if like is false, is it now uh, default? Yes, it will be. It will be. So let me start here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Two minutes. All, so all these good. are the yeah. tables. So uh -huh. as you see, users and items and likes is a transactional table. Um, so for example, Thai here likes Turkey or Bob here likes Turkey or, you know, Bob here also likes Croatia. So mm -hmm. this is a transactional table. And here in the API point, uh, so let's say, and I, I did make it really make, I, I didn't name this correctly. They, they need to be more semantically correct, but uh, this is basically, it should be called something else, but um. This is not getting the likes. This is actually getting all the list items for an authenticated user. And then there is an uh, add-on here and it assigns this uh, underscore likes where again, the variables, I named them poorly, but it, it decides whether this is this authenticated user for that specific item is true or false. Uh, if we can quickly run this, I'll show you. Uh, yeah. So for example, I am now, uh, as you know, this is a hypothetical user that's authenticated, whatever the OAuth uh, token was there. So mm -hmm. it goes through every single item and it tells me whether this user who's logged in liked that item or not. So in this case, it's false. In this case, false, uh, false. So it looks like this, uh, this user actually didn't like anything. Oh no, like the first one. <laughs> now, similarly to this, this variable, which is a, a an add-on variable, need to create another variable with the same logic but this time instead of likes it's going to be something like state 
and it's going to be instead of true or false it's going to say uh, default or active um, yeah so one of the really cool things about add-ons is they're really just functions so if you go to your library on the far left there and you go to add-ons and you open up likes what you can see is that right now if you go to output yes um you're returning the response as a bull uh but you could actually add on to your response here um, oh, okay. and so if you click the ed edit pencil there for return um all this is doing right now is it's just checking if it exists if it exists then it gives a true um, if it doesn't exist, it gives a false. Yeah. Um, so the way that I would uh, approach this is think about um, uh, basically building the logic in to your add-on to return uh, not just likes, but an additional variable Please. here. Yeah. So uh, that would be that would be sort of the the approach I think that I would take. And um, how do we go about it? I'm, I'm how do we go? <laughs> yes. How do we go about doing it? That's the part that <laughs> is a little bit new for me as well. I'm actually only two months myself into learning Xano. Oh. So let me give you one other way that you might be able to approach this. And then what I'll do is if, uh, if you wouldn't mind, um, just, uh, shoot me an email at, uh, Brian at Xano.com and I'll go research for this for you and bring it back in terms of like what the right approach with this 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 would be because I just want to check with our head of customer success in terms of like how he would customize add-ons but if we go back to your API function there's another way that we could do this as well perfect um so API okay so we are here right so what we could say is um, because we have another place here where you're returning your items, um, which is right there as self. Yes. So I think that the way that I would do this is let's click into your likes add on in the, sorry, go back to the query all records oh, uh, and to the, and, and to the output. Into the output. Okay. And let's go ahead and click on the likes bull right there. So the orange okay. likes. Yep. There we go. So we're what we're routing right now is we're routing in the ID and we're just returning if exists. So I'm thinking, let me see here. How would I approach this? Um, the thing is, this alone without the under the library. Remember how we went into the this alone will simply return whether that item has been liked or not by any user. This right here. That's yes. why we needed, we needed to go into the add-ons under the library to also introduce authenticated token user to filter it down to the user. Um, what I'm thinking is we might want to try creating a new add-on. So let's go ahead and X out of this. Okay, thank you. And let's just do another add-on. Okay. Uh, create a new add-on. Yep. And in this case, we're going to pass in the... Uh, yeah, let's see if we pass in the likes value. This should be pretty straightforward. It's just going to be um, a single item. Let me see. Do we want to item it or existence? Also, we don't I, use... I, uh, just to yeah. note, I, I uh, built a, a, a function that almost identical uh, yeah. over the weekend. Um, so happy to speak to that as well. Um, oh, that would be great. Yeah, what would you suggest? Yeah. So essentially, I think what what you'd want to, the the two steps that I would do uh, that I did were for the kind of analog to the um, list of of uh, like your transaction. Um, effectively, what you want to do when you want to to query only the um, the items that a user has already liked, what you would want to do is first when your uh, when you when you do the post uh, action to actually like an item, um, one you want to add a record into that uh, you know that transaction or that transaction log, uh, and you want to have um, a text field, uh, which you then update as active. So it would be like like status active, and then when you want to query the list of only the items that an authenticated user has liked. You would want to query that that um, transaction uh, record or that transaction uh, table, and then do mm -hmm. the add-on for 
the item connected yeah. to that uh, liked transaction record. So you're pulling only the transactions and then you get the actual data uh, of the item via the add-on. Uh, and then you're able to display that um, kind of, it, it, it's definitely a, a bit of a, a reverse thinking of how I'd initially yes, assumed, yes. Um, but you know, the add-on feature within Nano is incredibly powerful. I'd say that's probably your simplest solution. So that's probably the best. Uh, what I'd look at here is let's check out aggregate here for a moment too, just purely out of my own curiosity. So it looks like, yeah. So what we'd, what we'd end up doing is we'd probably end up adding an enum value. Are you familiar with enums yet? Um, so if, it's a drop down basically, uh, options, select options. Um, yeah, but you can also basically add an enum to a result. So what I would Perfect. say is I think, I think the solution that um, you were just offered in terms of create a field for the active or default state and use that as the determinant as to whether someone has liked something or not is probably the simplest and most efficient way to approach it. And then um, you've given me something to think about in terms of like adding a derived value. Um, that's not something I've built before, but I'll give it a shot and uh, post okay. it back to the community when I do. So you have it for future reference. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Great. I think we're ready for the next one then. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, Thailand. And um, well, we have uh, Thomas and Bilal who joined a bit later. Uh, so I guess uh, maybe we can just go with Thomas. If you have any questions, uh, mm -hmm. we, we'll be happy to, to go through them. Hey, Thomas. Oh. <laughs> hey, Hello. Hey. Good to see you again, Brian. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, the, the image, uh, oh, so, uh, Bravo team, uh, quick context. Um, I was on the Xano Ops House yesterday, um, or a couple days ago, mm -hmm. um, talking about a, a, a kind of bug I was finding where if I was, uh, uploading a photo, um, from the Bravo front end via the camera feature, the, yep. in, the native camera feature, it would yep. then get sent to Bravo tilted 90 degrees, um, which is pretty odd um and it hmm. would not happen if i uploaded from my gallery uh and then it also would not happen if i used a test api endpoint that brian had created um so not sure exactly what's going on there um because i did also as i mentioned brian created a um another uh test uh image uploader via that um the uh, like upload content um uh, API uh, template um, yep. and just tested it again this morning um, on both uh, of the, the test endpoints that I have and they're still coming in coming in a bit wonky um, so yeah if there's anything we can do to, to resolve that I'm happy to dig in yeah I mean uh, I remember there was a, a user who had similar issue in the past and uh, we managed to fix it by uh, just rotating the uh, the Figma element where you create the the input, I'm I'm not sure if that's gonna work for you. It might be actually an issue we we will need to have a look at. But just um, hmm. yes, if you try to rotate so the um, the um, yeah the element, basically the rectangle where you are uh, huh. adding then the input tag, that might work. Uh, just give All it right. a shot and and let us I'll know. I mean go. if. If it doesn't work, yes, uh, we, we, I, I guess our technical team will need to review that because it could be an issue, but uh, yes, let us know. Have, yeah, Javier on our side, uh, Sean is reviewing this just to double check. So basically, okay. um, just to restate it for the group, like the issue that we specifically found, Tomas, I think that you validated, which is when you upload the image, it's fine. It's when you take the image from your camera uh, in Bravo, that's <laughs> when yep. the rotation changes. Um, yep. I built an endpoint uh, we were able to make it work normally with the endpoint that I built. So we're looking into, I believe, Tomas, you're on our, our launch plan or our, our build plan. So um, we're just making sure that it's nothing specific to your plan on the Xano side. That's what we're following ah. up on. And Javier, feel mm -hmm. free to hit me up on our shared channel as you guys yeah. investigate. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> cool. So, uh, well, we have uh, Bilal as well. So, uh, Bilal, if you have any questions for us, we'll be happy to help you through. Uh, guys, uh, really happy to join this talk. I, honestly, today is my day one on Brava Studio. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just listening in and absorbing what you guys are uh, uh, talking. 
but uh, honestly i want to share my happiness today saying that uh, i'm a product manager so i work a lot on figma mm-hmm. and f- me finding out a tool that is so closely related and linked with you know with figma right and then how i'm able to convert my figma thought process directly into the app it's like oh, i i would say i mean i wouldn't be able to sleep tonight it's, that's the excitement <laughs> <I have. laughs> right? that's great to hear actually <laughs> yeah so it's like super excited and say like, how do i go about learning it as fast as possible and you know get everything out of it so i'm more of a visual guy so this is what excites yep. me right um but listening to the talks over here i need to pick a little bit about apis and how zen works i think that's mm-hmm. another learning curve i have to uh, yeah, embark on right we, we have so, a great video on apis which i'll share here and then we also yes. have office hours where you can come in for an orientation so if you ah. just like to have us kind of walk you through how zeno works um so, you can you can join any tuesday and see that so um you know pretty uh we we found it pretty useful for getting people started what i would say is you know bravo is very visual love you know saying really love how close to figma it is xano is going to be a different experience for you it is um it it, it takes a there's a little bit more of a learning curve in sort of understanding how the different components of xano's work and that Mm -hmm. orientation will introduce you to them all which uh, sh- you know, should help you get so your start. So usually the Tuesdays, the similar timing, like what we have now. Yeah. So I'll, um, I'll share right here in the chat. You can yeah. sign up for them here. Um, so that we can help you get started and, um, let's see here. So we got Santa office hours. Yep. There we go. So if you go to that link, you can schedule with us, get that orientation. Yeah. Um, honestly, what my number one suggestion is you know, go to the documentation and just play with some different things. We have videos, you know, mm-hmm. tons of videos, um, right. and the videos will really help you see yeah. someone else use I'm the app. I'm less of a reading guy than a video guy. <laughs> yeah, same. So, so that would be my suggestion is check out those videos on YouTube. All right. So I've noted down the office hour as a bookmark, and I'll definitely check out the channel <clears throat> and try to pick up. So the weekend is going to be on Bravo Studio and Zeno. <laughs> so. Yeah, and here's a here's a video that specifically will walk you through Bravo Studio and Zeno and getting started as oh, uh, you know maybe a good place to begin. Sure. Thank <laughs> you so much. You bet. That's great, and thank you for joining today. And just if, if you have any any questions about uh how Sano wor- uh, well bravo actually uh, works in terms of like uh building the the different mobile components and mm-hmm. and the api collection and that part we'll be happy to help as well so and is well I, I support uh channel that i can connect with i mean is there how do yes I- so I, I mean, on our site, we have a support email address that you can, uh, co- where you can contact us with any questions. I will just drop it here as well. Sure. Just one second. Uh, and then we also have a community, uh, as mm-hmm. uh, Sano does, and uh, that's also a great place to look for, actually to ask questions, but also to learn from other users that have, might have gone through something similar as you before. So mm. I guess it's a good place to, to learn as well. So Bravo Studio can connect with Airtable as well, right? Airtable. Yeah, so b- basically Bravo Studio can connect with any REST API of your uh-huh. choice. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, it's pretty flexible in terms of, uh, of connections. Um, so Sano yeah. is a, it's, a, it's a great backend tool, actually, because it allows you to create a lot of logic on the on the back end side so mm-hmm. so so yeah i mean it's definitely something well, worth looking at <laughs> all right thank you so much thank you so much all right so uh well we have some time left still so i don't know if uh any of the other attendees have any questions or yep, is anything you questions. want to yeah sir so we can just go ahead Cool. Sounds good. Um, yeah. So quick note, I did do the rotation in Figma, updated the Figma, updated the Bravo vision. 
still came in wonky. Um, so it might be something related to the plan. Um, not a huge thing for now. Um, but in terms of uh, other questions around Xano and Bravo, um, a couple of questions that I have were primarily around the signup experience. Um, so one, just wanted to see if there was uh, kind of any plans from the Bravo side to enable that custom post login flow uh, for Xano, which I know is available in Firebase, but yeah, curious what, what the, the kind of potential is um, for Xano. Um, and then also wanted just to see in terms of the user experience, um, like, is it always required that a user, uh, after they sign up, if that then is the user authentication, um, the user signs up and then they have to go straight to the login page and then log in? Um, or is there some way where you can just sign, sign up and then, you know, get into the experience? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, well, basically, yes. So, you know, we have plans to uh, revisit and, and improve all the authentication uh, part on our site. So currently, mm -hmm. as you said, uh, in terms of the sign up, uh, you would need to go back to the login basically because mm -hmm. it's how the, the our tags work, right? So for mm -hmm. the for the custom login, uh, for user registration, we use the uh, submit action instead of like a register action. So that's what we have on our side at the moment. And that's why you would need to log in then to actually get and save the, the authentication token and be able to use that mm -hmm. in the app later. So for now, that's uh, that's a sort of like a um, yeah, requirement on our side. Mm -hmm. And then regarding the post login, actually, you you will be able to implement it at the moment with with Sano or with like any backend. If you oh. return, if you control the logic of the basically of the visibility of the post login flow from the backend. So if you manage to uh, or if you create an endpoint where um, when you submit a specific user ID, oh, if that user is new, then uh, you uh. can just return a true and you can make it uh, show or, or not. Because I guess the most common use case is to do the user onboarding, but there there might, there might be other use cases where you want to show or hide it. So so you have the the control over that with the uh, with the APIs and uh, and uh, the, I mean ho hopefully hopefully we will we will make the setup a bit uh, easier to implement. Because uh, with Firebase, basically, we have two actions. We have the register action and the login action, and that mm -hmm. allow us to control the visibility of the of the post login just with attack. But with mm -hmm. uh, with our custom login feature, the one we use to authenticate with Sano, that's not available for now. But Got so yeah, that's it. okay. That's more or less the what you, what you can do to, in order to to build the the authentication. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, so just to, yeah. to confirm, effectively, what I'm hearing is for the the, the post login uh, flow. Essentially, those the those um, screens would have like a conditional visibility, where if the user is new, then yeah, then those screens are visible. If the user is not new, then those screens would not be visible. And then I assume that like the last button on that onboarding flow would be the API post or edit to that user's profile to switch that status from new to used. Correct. Yeah, actually, my oh, colleague Diego sent a link. Yeah, actually, Diego, my colleague, just sent a link uh, in the chat. So that's where we have mm -hmm. the documentation about that. And you, you will see there are two options. The first option is using DAX uh, that only works with Firebase at the moment. But ah, then the second option will work with, uh, with Sano. Got it. OK, yeah, I just I remember looking at this page and then seeing uh, the note at the top that it was only supported for Firebase. And I assume that was for the whole uh, the whole feature. I didn't know that was only for the, the first option. So brilliant. So okay. Thomas, if you don't mind, I'll reach out to you for some guidance on yours. But I was actually able, <laughs> yeah, for to, sure. I was actually able to, thanks to Javier Helps uh, last week, uh, get the authentication work without Firebase with the custom login and Xeno. And, and the reason I was interested in the post login so I can collect those additional information, first name, yeah. last name, photo, and yeah. whatnot. But with Xeno, I don't even need to use the Firebase anymore because right, right, right during the sign up, I can collect it, upload their photo and whatnot. And then you, if, if you can also give them a chance to, of course, edit that credential. So I no longer, in my opinion, need the, the, the post screen. Uh, and I can share what I did. Uh, but one area that I wasn't able to figure out yet, but I haven't spent enough time is resetting password. I think with Firebase, that's so much easier than it is with Xeno. So if you can talk about that reset password, password a little bit. 
Yeah, so I mean, on our side, um, the thing is, we, we don't have uh, basically the feature we use to, to authenticate with Sano and with any other backend that supports authentication is uh, custom authentication. And for now, we don't have a specific action to reset password against those. Um, however, if I'm not wrong, correct me, Brian, but uh, Sano has this, uh, this link where you can reset a password. So if you manage to send it to to your user email, for instance, and uh, they can just open the link from their browser or uh, whatever they, they receive that, then they should be able to up, update the password from there. Not within the app, because we don't have the, the action uh, in the app, but they should be able to to do that. But maybe Brian can guide you, guide you more on that. Yes, yeah, so we do have a password reset guide that you can follow here. Um, and um, I'm also looking at building a, a snippet, which you'll learn about when you go to that video specifically for Bravo. So the cool thing about snippets is the functionality is already built. You just press a button and bring it into your workspace. Um, and so you can see how we're approaching password reset right now. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. All right, so yeah, Tomas uh, is uh, dropping now. So thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining. See you. <laughs> All right, so um, well, any other questions uh, you might have, or we still have some time, so. Um, not on my end, um, but in the meantime, if we have time, and if, if you, do you, Brian, did you want to try to give that other step a shot? on my screen that they're building that additional add-on variable or, or reach out to so, you afterwards? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, your, your, probably your optimal architecture is to capture the default and active state in a field and then just update it like you would, um, you know, I think you're already familiar with, with, with how to do that at this point. Um, what I'm going to be doing is if you'd like, you know, you, you certainly can just join our office hours, but if you'd like to shoot me an email, um, yep. I'm going to go ahead and build a snippet that will show how to add a custom variable to an add-on. But just so that, you know, I, I don't steer you in the wrong direction, I want to make sure and confirm with our, our, our team that the approach that I'm thinking is the best performance. Because when I think about liking things, I think that's a pretty high volume activity. So I just want yep. to make sure that the, the structure that I'm recommending is one that will perform well. Um, but feel free to shoot me an email and I'll, I'll make sure you get that snippet when, when I build it. Um, and if you just want to see where I'm building snippets generally, by the way, um, this is sort of my own little corner of our community. Um, you know, when, as I get requests and build those snippets, I share them here. Uh, that's excellent. The only thing, if I'm not mistaken, the term snippet is the snippets are already pre-built. And, and so that's good. I mean, you just install it, bring it, download it, install it. But it also keeps us from learning how you have what the logic behind it. So perhaps so, in your snippets, you actually go through them, the steps, yeah. That, so that's that's how I think about snippets. The Perfect. purpose of snippets isn't for you to skip, uh, you know, the <laughs> development thinking that you need to do. It's actually to provide you like, hey, here's how we approach the problem. So every snippet has a video where I walk you step by step through how I created the snippet, why it works that way, and some Perfect. considerations that you might have in terms of the design. So great points um, and so happy that that's how you're thinking about it because we certainly want you to feel that as you're trying out you know, the different approaches that we take that you're understanding it from a first principles perspective. Great, thank you very much, thank you. My pleasure, Toby, great to see you. <laughs> Hello Toby, you're muted. <laughs> I think he's in a library, though. So keep. Going. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is. I am. Well, yeah. I wish I had to be quiet. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. I missed out all the fun. But um, yes, I thought I'd come and try and come in where I could. So uh, how do we? Sorry, go on. Oh, I was. I was. I was. I was brought a real challenge, which is how do we add on a derived variable to an add-on? Um, and so wow. I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to yeah. be building a snippet for that and uh, sharing it out to the community. Like I'm inspired. <laughs> Actually, I, I have a question, which I never, I never fully understood myself, Bazzano. So, what is the difference between an add-on um, and doing um, an eval? 
you know, how do they? Because I mean, yeah. I mean, I think I don't. Maybe I've missed the content on this a little somewhere, but because I mean, add-ons are super easy to do because it kind of does it. But it's not really a, is a join as far as I can figure out. It's like it seems to be. Well, I don't know. Maybe you could. Yeah. So add-on is our version. Thank you. That was the term that was slipping my mind there. Eval is the, is uh, worth definitely worth looking into. So I'll just share that uh, documentation. So eval is the way that typically we would. Um, add on, um, you know, a value to a returned object. The way that I think about add-ons is that they are, there are replacement for GraphQL. So the idea is that as long as your database objects are connected by an ID in some way, um, you can easily access all of the information and add-ons are also designed to stack. So, you know, you can do an add-on to an add-on um, and it's, it's, it's a pretty easy way to bring, you know, all of the data from multiple tables into a single re returned object. Um, whereas I think of evals as more of a calculated, um, you know, a field that you're adding to, to the stack. Okay, because I think the thing that always can, I mean, is there a performance difference between them? I mean, is like is under the hood is is the add on just a join to the tables, and then eval is different because it seems that you hate to join to use evals, but add and add ons. So it does mention that that they recommend using. There's one recommended over the other generally, right? But there's I just wondered if there's a performance difference between the two. That's a great question. I'll get back to you on that one, Toby. I, I'm curious about that myself. Um, in, in my own experience, I've certainly found that um, add-ons feel, you know, pretty fast. So yeah. I, I definitely uh, tend to prefer add-ons myself, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna check with Sean and see. Um, I'm sure I'll get the classic engineering answer of it depends. Yeah. And I'll see if I can get some uh, some more insight following that uh, that first answer. I, I did find it quite a weird thing with add-ons. Actually, there was um, I had one situation where I had added on, and then I had an array of integers in an add-on, and that wasn't usable. It gave me a weird error that kind of broke the. I should probably dig it out and send it to. You, but there was, I would um, love to check that. One out. That, that yeah. was one thing that I found. But I mean, generally, I mean, add-ons are super easy to use to kind of get that extra layer of data in the place so they're very cool but yeah yeah it's just I, trying I, to make sure that you understand the sort of boundaries of when you should use it and shouldn't you know that's where it gets uh when you start getting into things a bit more complex i guess yeah so i i will say that um so just to show everyone what we're talking about briefly here i've got a little workspace so that we can look at it um and i'll go ahead and pull up let's see why don't we just query all records for users i'll go ahead and share my screen so um, let's go ahead and say that, you know, we've got a database here of users. I'm going to add a table and we'll just call it fun and, um, we'll associate, you know, a game with a user and, uh, uh personally, I'm addicted to Catan. So we'll go ahead and put that one in and I'll create a user here for us just so that we can kind of see this in action. Um, so the idea being, how would we want to uh, work with this? What what I tend to see the the sort of like with add-ons, I have we've seen people do like twelve levels of nested add-ons. I think at that point you probably want to think a little bit more <laughs> deeply about your architecture. So I think the the performance danger danger of add-ons is sort of how easy it is to get carried away. Um, but this is what I was referring to here. There it is. So uh, you were doing an add-on uh, in our example here, where I could say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to pull a single item based on the user ID, and I'm going to get this, you know, the fun of the user, and so now I'm going to get this full object back, and I can say save and run, and uh, there we go. There's my there's my add-on result. Um, in this case, if I did an eval, this is what's interesting is I might be able to say something like, okay, um, we're gonna do the eval field of um, user as, let's say, uh, name as, you know, lowercase. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a filter to this eval that's just gonna lowercase the name for me. So I, 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 for me, the primary purpose of eval is to be able to add these filters onto the data coming through, 
uh, and transforming them in some way. Whereas add-ons really about extending the amount of data that you have right. uh, available to you. Um, so uh, there we go. There's my lowercase version of my name. So what when when you when we were first talking, uh, Ty, that was my my first thought is well maybe this would be an eval, but in your case. Um, you know, and, and there certainly are ways that we could get around this. In, in this case, what you're really trying to say is like, hey, um, if, and, and we can do, we can do some conditionals, but we could say something like, well, let's do like a sprint F. Oh, I don't think, even think that's available. I'm thinking about like ways we might be able to manipulate the information that we get here. So let's see. Yeah, so evals don't really have the ability to do conditionals. Um, and I think that with add-ons, you have a lot more flexibility in that regard in that you can customize the response in a variety of ways. So um, I'd say that's probably their primary difference, but from a performance perspective, I am very curious to hear. So I guess my question for you, Toby, would be, where would you have a choice between using an add-on versus an eval? From from your perspective, so, I, I as mean, you're well, with I, it. I guess when I, I mean, I guess it's really looking at this. I mean, when it was saying that the add-ons are preferred method, I think it was when I was trying to do just get a single element from a, a lower level, and I, I was doing yes. a join, and yes. with a join you can kind of reference with an eval, so you can just pack single pieces. But and I, I wasn't right. sure if there was any particular sort of performance difference within two because I wasn't sure was it better to just do that, or was it better just to do an add-on and then be done with it? It's kind of where I was playing with this a little bit and trying to yes. sure. So in this case, we could say something like, you know, we can we can do a join, do a conditional, and then I believe you were looking at adding an eval here. Is that is that it? Uh, no, I, well, I mean, I think it was, it was just trying to surface a nested bit of information. That was all I was trying to do. I think it was what single, a single element that I wanted. To yeah, a single, a single element. I definitely think that add-on is going to be the sort of like designed uh, function okay. for that. Okay, but, fair enough. But, but a good question there. I'll definitely, um, you know, I, I love exploring the edge cases. So I'll check out in terms of like, in terms of adding, you know, a single joined, joined field, which would be, uh, which would be optimal. Actually, I do have one other thing. Uh, well, yeah. if, just, if we're going to talk about things that would be useful that we come across, yeah. um, I, I think we, we talked about this before, actually. And uh, apologize if you already covered it today, but we get a lot of users who want to authenticate with Firebase and then use Xano because obviously Xano and Firebase has loads of social we, logins. It makes a lot of things a lot easier. We uh, did just have that conversation. Yeah. We had that conversation. So, okay. So, is, yeah. is there a is there a because i don't know what well what was the outcome of that so I, I think the consensus javier if i understood it correctly was um that you can do your authentication with xano um in the use case that that was brought up i think toby you, you and i have talked a little bit about expanding the social logins available on xano so that you don't need to rely on your firebase so yeah. the the this the you know it is possible to create you know, you have custom authentication with a, you know, say Facebook or Twitter. Um, you know, we, we have guides on how to do that, but it's not baked in. It's not super easy yet for every single social. And so that's one of the things that's on our roadmap. Is well, so, I mean, the thing is with these sort of social logins, what tends to happen is that, I mean, it needs front end work, right? I mean, effectively mm -hmm. you need to do the callback process mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to be able to make it happen. So the stuff that probably we need to do because I mean, I think what Xano gives you is like the, the the sort of skeleton of the pieces, and then you kind of have to put the front end to make all that make it all happen. But I yeah. think the thing that would be useful for me if we were using something like Firebase would be having some more functionality to be able to kind of connect to Firebase. So, for example, right now you've got like JWE token decomposers, but actually, yeah. for example, you know, with Firebase. Uh, you don't have the variables available easily. Well, they're kind of an adjacent file. So, uh, you know, be able to, you know, if there was like a authenticate with Firebase and you could just put in the, the reference to where the, the, the tokens would, were or, or where the, 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 the keys were, then it would be, you know, it would be as easy as you know, what I'm basically getting at is I think there's, you know, having rather than just saying authent authenticate on or off being able to kind of have authentication work with other providers would be super powerful because, you know, what, what tends to happen is we want to be able to use 
potentially other ways of logging in and actually protect the, the, the APIs. But if we don't use the Xano authentication, what we have to use is we have to kind of make our own version of remember to put it on every API endpoint, you know, have like a probably yeah. some sort of precondition as a yeah. sort of function to do it for us. And, you know, it'd be quite, I think it would be quite interesting to be able to open up authentication, yes or no, and say, look, you can authenticate and maybe have a function that defines what authentication means so that you don't necessarily, uh, you know, Xano will build your own. But anyway, it's just good. something we, we came across. So it was just- Hey, a, Prakash, perfect timing. Yes. We were just getting into exploring uh, Firebase authentication and if it might make sense for us to, you know, build a module for that. <laughs> and I, I, think we, I think we maybe you're in muted. my mode. <laughs> we're not hearing you. <laughs> Did you upgrade your setup again? <laughs> How about now? How about there now? we go. We got you. That's, that's, yep. yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Michael and Justin are also here. So we're just kind of a, a Xano takeover for the Bravo oh. office. Hour. Wow. Yeah. Um, hey, guys. Yeah, but I, so I, there's a couple of things. So one is, I guess the short answer is we don't make this easy, but it's always possible to authenticate with another service and use Xano's authentication. Because what ends up happening is you can actually pass the authentication to token that you're getting from whatever other service people do this with bubble uh we've seen people do this with firebase translate that into a xano token and then use that to authenticate across the different endpoints you basically separate out um your auth to basically do use this mechanism rather than our standard uh, and that uh, token handoff is automatically done in that authentication endpoint it's not ideal because it obviously is a more technical process to create that but it is something that is a hundred percent possible. So whether you're, as long as it's a JWE uh, token, which is being passed, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, so I, if they I are, can't. yeah, I get it. I think I get that. Because what what happens is, for example, Firebase, their social auth, they get the uh, the token from the header and the callback. They translate that into JWE. Then they pass that to Zano. Zano then translates it to the Zano token, and then you can authenticate uh, using all endpoints. So a lot of people use Zano's. Like even though it's Xano's authentication layer, you're authing like almost twice, like with uh yeah, with whatever I, I, other yeah. service. I, I guess it would be I haven't seen any kind of like walkthroughs of that. I mean it would be or even we haven't, uh, that would yeah. be, because if if, it's, if it's, it was all a way of explaining, because I mean, I guess it makes sense to be able to just tr translate the token and re because I guess you could then you'd have to put all of the um uh, not the contracts, but you know all the definitions within the token that you come from Firebase or whatever. You need to then make sure that they were in the Firebase. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Within the token, you have a series of claims. All the claims that come yeah. from Firebase, like the, I'm authorized to do this, this, and this. You'd have to build them into the uh, uh, Zano token to be. Well, I don't know. I, 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 this is probably way too deep for this this time. But uh, if if there was a if there was a any kind of worked example of that, that would be super interesting because I think we've got a lot of yeah. people that would really love to be able to do more with yeah. um, other authentication tools. Um, they, we totally. want to use Zano yeah. to do the bulk of the work, but the authentication, you know, it's quite hard with Bravo. We can only really support a single. Auth, OAuth 2 provider. So what tends to happen yeah. is when we use Xano, we then have to go to another tool like Firebase or Auth, um, or, or Auth0 to be able to have multiple social social logins sure. um, because the way that the way that we're set up. So you know, having a way of making that easier, or just even if it's a walkthrough, would be super helpful for us. Yeah, this is potentially we can um, you know put a snippet around and and put a, an explainer around how to do this yep. uh, specifically with Firebase and more generally. Michael, is there anything that I missed that you want to add there? No, I think you uh, I think you covered it all. Okay, and then the other thing which I was just catching the tail end of um, what Brian was explaining uh, around add-ons, which I think is correct. So basically, add-ons from a performance perspective. Um, and I actually just went through this with, uh, in detail with Sean, basically what it's doing is similar to what GraphQL does is it basically has a performance, um, it breaks down to a performant, uh, database query for you. Right. And so rather than performing multiple requests, it, it's a smart way to basically enrich data. So if you're just looking for a single object enrichment, like 
negligible performance between doing like just a join and um, doing a single object add-on. But once you start uh, exploding that, like give me uh, the all of the authors and give me all of the books associated with those authors, um, it starts to become a lot more apparent because rather than the 101 API or requests or queries that you would have to do, it's actually just two. So there's, um, we basically try our best with add-ons to make the most performant query possible uh, and then basically just serve up that enriched related data, but give you the control to where you can go to the add-on itself and adjust it. And that's what GraphQL doesn't do. It's just kind of a black box like, oh, we're just feeding you this information. It may or may not take a long time depending on how you query the data. Okay. So basically the short answer is use add-ons as much as possible because then really yes. better. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. hundred percent. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, uh, so well, anything, maybe I don't know if you covered this, but is anything interesting coming down the line from Zano that you can talk about? As always, I always like to ask this question because it's always interesting to see what's happening next. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of exciting things uh, that are happening right now. Um, I would say like probably, so the thing, like some things that we're probably going to do soon are like we are going to be working on this like metadata API, which just is going to make integrating with us a lot easier because not only are you going to get the API endpoints, but you're going to get the nature of the fields, right? Associated with the database tables. So uh, for example, for just tighter integrations to like understand the nature of the field types that are coming back from Xano, um, that's going to be big because for example, a lot of people integrate with Airtable that way because they have a pretty robust metadata API, which we just haven't done. And that's usually because like we not all API endpoints are created equal. Some are obviously querying the database directly and then some aren't, but we're we're going to do a better job of that. So that's probably the the biggest and most exciting thing. We're also basically constantly looking at ways to like we just launched that new functions v2 editor. Um we're kind of going to we're scoping to take that further and uh, like inclusive of right panel improvements. We just focus on the left hand side, but what about that right side in terms of like a helper and just making things a little bit more efficient when you're building? Uh, and then that bleeds into the uh, spreadsheet viewer as well. So I think what you're going to see over the next couple quarters is the floor of Xano slowly dropping, right? Like being able to use it and to use it uh, by like a broader audience, it's just going to become easier and easier to use. Um, but that's probably what I can talk about for now. There's tons of other stuff that's, that's sure. going on. But well, I mean, if I, yeah. if I can add in two requests is on that right panel, please make it so I don't have to do the double save. That killed me so many times where save, I'm good. And oh, it's just completely lost what I've just done. God damn it. That drives me crazy. So if it just does yeah, a single save, that would be super helpful. The other thing actually more seriously, that would be really cool. Um, that's interesting from us perspective would be some way of having like a an api to be able to either generate accounts um so that we could basically so mm -hmm. if we get a user coming in say i want to use bravo and say hey look click a button and we could spin up we could create your xano account for you and 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 we'll give you set you up with a snippet or something so that people can get going really fast and so they can it's rather than having to go oh xano sounds good figure out how that works sign up for that you know making that whole because i mean we're trying to make it so that we can make it easy for people to use other tools and and then they can have yeah. like a whole end-to-end -end experience so if there's any kind yeah. of like admin api that's, that that we could kind of make that process a bit easier for people that would be super interesting for us uh, again i don't know what yeah that's on the roadmap that would be uh really powerful yeah it's in i mean obviously it's possible i'm just curious like when you think about that do you see it as like it's an automated process where you trigger like account creation and they go through our onboarding or do you see well, like so a joint this, onboarding? This is a quick question because obviously, you know, you've got your own onboarding, you've got your process. You want to make sure that people understand Xano and they're not getting lost in the middle of things. But um, I'm trying to figure out a way of, because when people come into us, we want them to be able to get to an end-to-end -end thing done. So they can at least see it and play with it. Or if they want to, we can get something spun up from quickly. So I don't know if it's a way of saying, um that could kind of capture what you need from a, 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 the 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 end-to-end -end experience but see the advantage is that they'll have the whole the whole thing i mean normally when they spin up the azano experience they have to do something else to be able to get the front end to be able to use it right so there's normally extra yeah. stuff they have to do to get a fully a fully useful 
product, whatever they're trying to do. It, I mean, it would be interesting to be able to kind of make it easy for people to you know, get all these pieces put together. And I don't know how, whether it just making it simpler so we can just kind of, they, they, they can sign up to Xano, go through the onboarding, and then we have a token that we can then pull in a stick. Well, that's what I think. Or something. I, 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 I think know. ultimately what it will, I think ultimately what it will turn into is like, there is a link on Bravo's side that has a set of parameters in that link that will tell us not number one, this is coming from Bravo Studio. Uh, number two, to for us to customize that onboarding experience for Bravo Studio users. So for example, they come in, we already know they're Bravo Studio. We present them with a customized screen where they have their choice of, for example, snippets or things that we already know will help them onboard very quickly, right? It doesn't take away from our general onboarding experience. It just curates it or customizes it to the Bravo Xano experience. And um, I think right now our onboarding experience is like, you tell us because we have no idea who you are. But if we know a lot more information, we would obviously change that experience. And I think that's possible with just like parameters that you send us over. Yeah, I mean, so maybe ultimately, that's the... sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, ultimately, that sounds awesome. Just being able to, like, spin up accounts uh, from people, like, from tools like yourself that we have close relationships with and just make that feel like a very, like, uh, partnered, uh, close experience to where they don't have to do much thinking. It just happens for them. Uh, and they have, like, customized help documents uh, and everything for it. So we're we're thinking about this on the education side, but not necessarily on the onboarding tooling side yet. But there's, I think it's one and the same. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe that's a nice compromise. And maybe if collectively we can get to the questions that we both need, you know, we could feed them through to you as parameters. It could kind of jump those steps if we've already got that information that you want to collect as they're on board. Particularly because yeah. what, what I'm thinking about, imagine if they can say, look, I want to build this this type of app. You know, they can pull the Figma design down. We can, we know we are, we feed you the questions you need to ask about what kind of person they are, or whatever, and then and then you know build the snippet in their account. So immediately it's working, uh, and they've yeah. got something they can actually play with, and they've got a starting point that they can then tweak and go on with. So as long as we're getting the data that we will need, they can they can get through this process much faster than trying to figure out how they start. And you know, it's it's a, I think it's a much better end to end experience. And I think ultimately where we both need to get to, well, I think this all this idea of using these different tools working together, together better, if we make these kind of things, we integrate these pieces better. So we're still getting the information we need, but there's a better end-to-end -end user experience. Then I think, you know, the users just generally get like, generally happy. I think, you know, the problem we're having at the moment is that, you know, if, if someone starts the Bravo, they onboard with Bravo, they then have to onboard with you to be able to get an end, to get everything working. And that's, there's some friction there because there's a lot of repeated information. Um, but if, you know, if we could make a way that we make that better, then that's a win, I think, for both of us, potentially. And, you know, it's not just us, it's other people that use your tooling, right? I mean, it's not, yeah, it's, and it's, it's a generic thing. I think it's like a step-by-step. -step. So, I mean, the first thing is like the tools are completely disparate. They don't know it about each other at all. Like the first step of this is basically what we're doing right now. It's like an integration. There's a Xano logo and there's a Bravo Studio like front end and we are tailoring the content, right? Uh, but it's through these conversations, we're like, well, how can we make that even tighter and tighter and tighter to where um, in this new no code world uh, where we're we're deeming no code plus, it is a world <laughs> where people have different stacks, right? It's like people basically say, no, we're not going to use one tool to do everything. We're going to use the right tool and the right tool set for the type of application we want to launch. So if they've chosen to use um, Xano, Bravo Studio, WeWeb as the stack, well, why shouldn't that experience, especially if we're all philosophically aligned, be as tight as possible to where yeah. the user is like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I've had this complete web mobile backend building experience that was tailored to me. I had the education that I wanted when I needed it. I had the snippets and the templates ready to go. And I got started within like five to 10 minutes, right? like we should be able to support that. So I think like, it's just, you're seeing this evolution happen again, starting with like, we didn't know who we were, you know, then we met in Paris, then we're like, Hey, these are the things that we can do together. So you're seeing like, we're slowly coming closer together. So I think this, I think it's happening, right? It's just like, 
we want to get there on the snap of a finger, but it just takes time. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. There's lots of things we all got to deal with, but it's just, I think it's um, it's something that we definitely we feel that uh, would be nice to be help people get up and running. I mean, that's one of the key things. But yeah. uh, I'm sorry, I feel like I've got rambled on to all sorts of different areas. So I apologize for taking you in different directions, but I think it's always interesting to have these conversations. For sure. For sure. Now, are, are we actually helping people here? Or are we just talking about Zeno Bravo? <laughs> we, 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 cleared, we cleared through the queue. And I think Ty is okay. just along for the ride. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like any, I'd love to hear from other people that aren't part of the Bravo Studio Zeno uh, contingent. Any requests or anything that, you know, that both of us could be doing better to make your your experience uh, wonderful and uh, launching your applications. Uh, one suggestion, if I may jump in, is um, of course both platforms have the community, but as the name suggests, it's a community-driven platform. After all, you know you you have other things to worry about. And but I, I'm wondering, has it been tried, or is it does it is it not even feasible to have? A public Slack channel, uh, so that it's not just the community that responds, uh, but more the staff also responds to these questions. Uh, maybe whether it's a Slack channel, whether it's Discord or something. Um, so we we have a we have a builders channel, like a Slack channel um, for Xano specifically. Are you talking about like a a horizontal in general no code channel that? all tools are a part of or are you just not saying necessarily, not, not necessarily i was talking more specifically for for bravo as well as zano zano uh like maybe a slack channel for zano where i can go post in a question is like if anybody is live and would like to answer instead of waiting to see two days later nobody responded to a question because the community is that. like that nobody really responds in communities and neither community very very little <laughs> yeah yeah our, our our community is getting there so we have uh i think eight to twelve people now in our xano builder community it's still quite small but you know we do see some activity i do visit it very frequently um, so you're, you're welcome to jump in there. Um, and, uh, Michael, while I have you actually, Ty did have a request about, I think, adding an eval to one of his, um, functions. Um, and we could just, we, we could probably, you know, get it taken care of right, right now, Ty. So if you want to reshare your function again, um, I, 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 I told him I wasn't quite comfortable enough to like dive in on this one. I wanted to check in with you first to make sure I wasn't going to create any performance issues for him. But what he, what we see with Bravo is that when they, when they like something in the Bravo interface, it triggers a state of default or active. And so, if you want to bring us over to your API, your your function yeah, there, certainly. So I actually follow one of uh, Prakash's uh, tutorials from a year or so ago to create this transactional table um, between the users and items. But all, all it is, is of course, as you know, the items ID and the user ID. And so, and then thanks to some other tutorials, I was able to inside this, uh, uh, again, please ignore the name, that's incorrect, semantically not correct, but this is basically a get request that queries all the items. Um, and then here's an add-on uh, for, uh, again, improperly named, but likes. This will return whether something that item uh, is liked or not however this itself is not enough because this is simply going to return true for anybody even if anybody liked that uh, regardless of the authenticated user so the next step was to come into here to add-ons under the library and further filter it down for the authenticated user with the auth id so that's good basically if we if we run this um now now that that additional um Filtering is done for the authenticated user. If, if we were to run this, um, oops, sorry about that. What did I do? Um, but basically, um, it does return all the items in, in the list and it does successfully assign a Boolean value called um, true or false uh, based on uh, whether that specific user liked that item or not likes true for example the first item they liked it and everything else is a false now when it comes to xeno uh, and bravo 
in order to create this bookmark, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, or filled heart or outline heart type of uh, things, we need to return another string variable. And the string variable has to be specifically named state, if I remember correctly. And then the value for that key is gonna be uh, a string and it has to be one of the two, default or uh, active. So, I feel like just like how we dynamically calculate these likes, true or false, um, we need to now do this for a string variable. Uh, that's the issue that I wasn't able to solve yet, if that helped. <laughs> yes, you need to attach a, a field to each of these um, objects that has a state. That's uh, the key is state in a value of uh, active or default. The issue is, if I go back to my transactional table, um, this only this record only exists. Uh, meaning, uh, basically, what we are suggesting is something like this. Let's just uh, state, uh, and maybe not text, maybe a, a enum or something. So basically, we're saying this just this has to be active, for example, or default. Is that what you're saying? Because this. Anything that's any record here automatically means it's active. Um, because this only actually this table only is the transaction where a user specifically likes something. It doesn't show what they didn't like, if that makes a difference. Yeah, no. So what I'm asking is in your um, API oh. response, you need to attach oh, okay. a field that's called state to each of the objects, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so right. I think the only way to go about that is you'll actually have to uh, use a for each loop through okay. each of those records. And then you'll need to do a um, a conditional. I'm guessing it's based on likes, the uh, likes field. This is yep. right here. Perfect. Yep. So yeah, if true, then you'll update the item uh, with the field state. Um, the value active and then else update the item with state and the uh, value of default. Okay. I, I understand the logic. I, I thought I was able to follow it. Thank you so much. Um, so now that I'm a newbie, uh, so I, I assume the for each loop is going to take place somewhere here. Uh, maybe data manipulation. Is that it? Loops. Uh, okay. But, is it okay to do this now or or do you want to keep it high level or yeah I, I, oh, I, I, oh, okay, I can perfect. stay with it Ty what I was curious about Michael is could the you know I had sort of two questions one could you add an eval would the eval be added to each individual item or would it only be added to the total return of items um I'll start with that one would would that be an approach that we could do like eval likes true then you know, uh, basically create a new item, uh, you know, key that is state active. Um, the only issue with <clears throat> evals is I don't think you can perform any kind of conditional logic with it um, to sort of assign it those different values. That makes you sense. Just yeah. Triple check on my end, but. Yeah, that's what I had checked. I couldn't find that. And then the other, well, so I'm happy for you to check first. The other question I had is the add-on is in the library. Could we modify the add-on or build a function as an add-on that would provide that conditional logic? Um. Right now, the add-on only checks if it exists. So if the row exists, it comes back as true. If it doesn't, it's false. But I was thinking that if it could return the value of true, it could also return um, an additional an additional value, key and, key and value pair there. So this is where you would go to, if you'd like to look, um, you know, the um, suggestion from the community was he just adds a, a column there, makes it active and then, um, or, you know, default, but I think the problem in that regard is he's yeah. really looking for the JSON response to drive the behavior of the app. So if you go to add-ons there, Ty, under your library uh, and just open it up, um, you know, I'd, I'd seen you, Michael, sort of like modify add-ons in a couple other instances. I wasn't sure if there was an ability to, you know, modify the output here 
with an additional value? Um, so not for this use case. Um, not this type of add-on, yeah. Yeah, the only other thing that we could do here, I think, would be with evals, but once again, then you wouldn't get that conditional if it's Got true, it. so active, false, default. So Okay, great. So basically... Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're essentially saying items is an object. We're going to iterate to the object. We're going to add a new value, uh, a new key, and then give it either a default or active based on a, a conditional. And then we're going to reconstitute the object as items and push that push that out as the return. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, the uh, update variable is all taking place in the uh, in the for each loop. So. I just oh yeah, because we could just we could just append to the object. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That makes sense. Exactly. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. So I'll walk you through this tie. This will be fun. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you. Guys. So here, for sure, <laughs> this is um, you know this is good learning for me as well. <laughs> so if uh, if you go to list there and you select items, so you're going to go exactly. You're going to loop through those items, and then you can just save. Oh, save yes. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add right where under the stack it says if yep you're going to go Oops. ahead and click add that's it and then you're going to go to data manipulation but in this case conditional and our if statement is going to be um go ahead you can click that edit there so we're going to go ahead and select item and then we'll use dot notation here so it'll be item dot underscore likes And then we're going to put in the... Sorry, uh, didn't pick it up. Um, I wonder if I'm... That's okay. Dot underscore likes. And you, you want press... the uh, singular item instead of oh, items. Oh, just, you're right. Just the item. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's towards the bottom there. Yep, that's it. I'm sorry, and... I can't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you got it. Uh, and then just true. Uh, just true? Or... or... I Oh, actually, in this case, likes is uh, no. It's an eva It's a. It's an add-on exists. So yeah, true. True would be it. Mm -hmm. And then save. And then just as a sanity check, let's go ahead and do two, uh, save that there. Double save. There we go. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to have you do is on your conditional if there, you just mouse okay. over it. You see the little plus sign at the bottom. Yes. If you click that and click stop and debug, uh, sorry, plus, and then click utility functions. I'm, I'm so used to doing it this way now. I'm skipping steps on you, sorry. Utility functions and stop and debug. And then what we're gonna do is in value, we're gonna select item and save. Um, and this is just a little utility to help us go through this process together. So now drag stop and debug above your conditional. So sure. you'll need to grab that handle on the side there. Yeah, no, no problem. I do that too. There you go. No, so you'll you'll want to put it in the for each loop, but above the conditional. That's right. And then just run and debug for us here. Um, just so that we have it, you know, there for us. Yeah, and you'll need to type in a name. Mm -hmm. That'll work. Any one of those. It's all right. Thank you, autocomplete. All right, and then if we scroll down, there we go. So we can validate, there it is, underscore likes is true. Great. Um, and so we can just leave your run and debug up on the side there. So going back to your function stack. Okay. Mm -hmm, scrolling down. Good. So, okay, so what we're, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say add, yep. And uh, we're going to manipulate your object, so it's data data manipulation. Create and uh, uh, objects objects there. We might end up creating it. Yeah. Oh no, nope, that's right. We're going to do a set append. So let me see here. I'm thinking, what's the best way to approach this? So back to data manipulation. And let's look at 
So you want to update uh, variable here. Update, update variable because we're going to do it as a filter, right? Yeah. So update variable, existing variable item. There you go. And then item again, because that's the so, thing you're going to update. Right. So here actually, um, yeah, you can do on existing existing variable item dot state. Nice. And, and then the value here is uh, going to be uh, active, the string active. Oh, right, because you're just you're just uh, updating it with an additional uh, item. Interesting. Yep. Got got notation. That's cool. Nice shortcut. And then your else, I bet you can guess what this one is. <laughs> Give it a try. So we went in here. Did we go to append? No, we didn't. Or Are you, update variable. And, and so selected item dot state. Mm -hmm. And then so this would be just the value that you want. So in this case, it would be default, oh. right? Default, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Cool. And then what we can do before we rerun it is that stop and debug that we did. Let's go ahead and pull it below the conditional now. I, I keep doing it. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. So if you mouse over, stop and debug, it's you, the right panel can be left open even as you're moving things around. That's it. Yeah. You can just drag it inside the conditional, but below, uh, inside the 4H, but below the conditional. That's it. Yep. And then just run and debug. Okay. So this is the general likes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yep. So you don't need to publish yet. We'll do. Yep. Run and debug. You've got it. There you go. So if you scroll down and there's our state. And it's only showing us one record because we are on debug mode. Is that why? Uh, so that's right. Me, yeah. So if you, if you pull that uh, stop and debug out of your for each loop, just to the bottom and, and uh, yeah, right there. And then change it to item uh, instead of item. Yeah. You'll be able to see them all. Oh, this items mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I can just delete it right after we are. You could, but in this way, you'll be able to see that it's updated them all. So this one, oh, okay, perfect, perfect. This is it. <laughs> I couldn't have figured this out by myself. <laughs> well, as you saw, even um, I got distracted by the add on <laughs> approach as well. So um, sometimes it's the simplest approach that works the best um so this is uh feel free to follow up with me you do have my email address if you end up uh, running into any other issues here we'll uh, do you'll it. want you'll yeah. want to click publish so that you can use it with bravo this is excellent thank you so much again really appreciate it <laughs> i'm so glad that we were able to be helpful glad michael jumped in here at the last moment thank you thank you javier great hanging out with you guys yeah I mean, uh, it was great uh, session, and uh, and well, also nice that we finally uh, got to help Thailand as well. So yeah, thank you everyone for for joining, and uh, and well, I, I guess we will at some point have the record recording for the session and maybe publish it somewhere. So so yeah, great stuff. Thanks for joining. <laughs> thank you, thank Good you, thank you so much. See you next bye time. bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.